John McAfee in 2017 all the way through 2019 promised repeatedly to eat his own dick on national television if Bitcoin didn't reach one million dollars in three years time in something later dubbed the dickening. Hi, Ante here. There have been countless Bitcoin price predictions since its inception in 2009. Most of them have already been proven wrong. However, for the rest of them, the jury is still out. And even though I find price predictions a fool's game, just for the fun of it, I bring you five most surprising Bitcoin price predictions I've heard so far. The thing with price predictions is that if enough people make their guess, some of them are bound to be correct at least once. Anyway, we'll start off with the safest bets and progressively move on to more risky ones. Most of them are tied to the current market cycle, but some are more of a long-term perspective. Prediction number one, Bitcoin will reach between $100,000 and $288,000 by the end of this market cycle, according to Stock to Flow model or S2F. The model itself was created by Plan B. On his website, it says Plan B at 100 trillion USD is a Dutch institutional investor with a legal and quantitative finance background. So I guess he knows his stuff, but what it all boils down to is that the model treats Bitcoin as being comparable to commodities such as gold, silver or platinum. These are known as store of value commodities because they retain value over long time frames due to their relative scarcity. As a result of Bitcoin halvings, flow or newly minted units are getting cut by a half every four years, which reduces its inflation in the process and makes it ever scarcer compared to the existing supply or stock. Watch this video to learn more about it, but basically Plan B provides all the data and charts and historically speaking, it all fits. The price would usually overshoot the target and then stabilize around it for a while until the next halving, after which it would start to increase again. Over the past few years, Bitcoin's store of value narrative has gradually been adopted widely as opposed to the day-to-day -day payment system narrative. So that also fits perfectly into the model. We'll just wait for a few more months and see how it goes. But at this point, I don't believe there's any doubt on whether Bitcoin will reach 100K. The real question is by how big of a margin will it overshoot it? And by the way, at 100 trillion USD is Plan B's Twitter handle. He posts regularly and I highly recommend you to follow him if you're interested in this topic. Prediction number two. This is actually a bundle of predictions made by investment banks and investment management firms ranging between $146,000 and $500,000. JP Morgan says that Bitcoin could reach $146,000 in the long term as it competes with gold as a safe haven asset. Gold has an estimated market cap of $10 trillion while Bitcoin has just recently crossed 1 trillion. By that logic, if Bitcoin manages to take some market share from gold, that could easily justify these predictions, but that's not all of it. Citibank set their price target for Bitcoin at $318,000 by the end of 2021, saying a decoupling of gold from fiat currencies, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the desire for central banks to pursue aggressive quantitative easing policies could lead to future explosive growth in Bitcoin. That comes from Thomas Fitzpatrick, a current managing director at Citibank. ARK Invest, on the other hand, sees Bitcoin nearing $500,000 in the future as they expect it to surpass gold in total market cap. Let's say Bitcoin reaches the capitalization of $10 trillion. If we divide that by the current supply, we get the price point of almost $535,000. So that explains it. And that to me still seems within the realm of possibilities. The only question here is the question of time frame, or is it going to happen this market cycle or the next, and possibly even this one. More on that in the next prediction. Prediction number three, Bitcoin could go as high as $1 million. According to Dan Held, who raised the possibility of Bitcoin reaching 1 million in something he called a super cycle. But before we continue with this one, one honorable mention, John McAfee. John McAfee in 2017 all the way through 2019 promised repeatedly to eat his own d on national television if Bitcoin didn't reach $1 million in three years time, in something later dubbed the d 
His first statement came in form of a tweet where he said that he will do what he will do if Bitcoin didn't hit $500,000. But he later doubled down on his bet and said that he will do the same for $1 million Bitcoin. It was quite a fun period of time, even though it was in the middle of a bear market. People immediately made his countdown clock and it was an inspiration of many memes, but eventually he failed to do so and it all went down as a joke. And now, back to Dan Held. In his article, he explains how the Bitcoin market moves in four-year cycles, but this time, as he says, it seems different. By the way, he's been in the market for a very long time, and this is his third market cycle, so there is some foundation to his claim, but reasons he mentions for such a cycle are as follows. A. Macro backdrop. He states that between the last financial crisis from 2008 and 2020, markets haven't had a real recession, but then all of a sudden, COVID broke out and it marked the beginning of extreme money printing. $10 trillion, and now even more than that, was printed across the world in order to bail out the unstable financial system, which meant the unavoidable devaluation of traditional currencies due to diluting supply. And it continued further. Recently, another $1.9 trillion stimulus package was approved by Biden administration. And there have been talks of another $3 trillion package coming. And we all know where that's going. Ever since the start of all the money printing, all the markets have been on an extreme bull market and the end is nowhere in sight. Also, I don't believe that just giving away that kind of money does what world governments want, but we'll cover that some other time. The next thing he defined is B, institutional herd is here. That's pretty straightforward. He wrote a list of financial institutions and trading legends which recognized gold 2.0 in Bitcoin. Well, here they are. Since his article, many more companies were appended to this list, such as Square and Tesla, which made such an investment even more credible for the rest of the institutions. In short, it's a start of a trend. C. Singular narrative. We've covered that within the first prediction, but he singled out the Bitcoin store of value narrative as the only thing that's driving the crypto space forward during these times. And D. Availability and ease of use. It is way easier to enter the crypto space now when I compare it to the previous market cycle peak of 2017. You can now buy Bitcoin wherever you want. PayPal, Robinhood, Revolut, there's a bunch of Bitcoin ATMs and of course crypto exchanges. So it's way more accessible to an average person which obviously helps the adoption. So to sum it up, all of these four factors create something of a perfect storm for Bitcoin. It kind of all came together at the same time, which might prove to be pretty explosive. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Prediction number four, Hal Finney. One of the cypherpunks, inventor of reusable proof of work, the second person ever to mine Bitcoin and the first to receive a transaction from Satoshi himself, published a famous price prediction of $10 million per Bitcoin. And what he wrote is mind-blowing, quote, it's interesting that the system can be configured to only allow a certain maximum number of coins ever to be generated. I guess the idea is that the amount of work needed to generate a new coin will become more difficult as time goes on. One immediate problem with any new currency is how to value it. Even ignoring the practical problem that virtually no one will accept it at first, there's still a difficulty in coming up with a reasonable argument in favor of a particular non-zero value for the coins. As an amusing thought experiment, imagine that Bitcoin is successful and becomes the dominant payment system in use throughout the world. Then the total value of the currency should be equal to the total value of all the wealth in the world. Current estimates of total worldwide household wealth that I have found range from 100 trillion to 300 trillion dollars. With 20 million coins, that gives each coin a value of about 10 million dollars. So the possibility of generating coins today with a few cents of compute time may be quite a good bet, with a payoff of something like 100 million to one. Even if the odds of Bitcoin succeeding to this degree are slim, are they really 100 million to one against? Something to think about. Hal. Just like Hal said, it's an interesting thought experiment and how likely it is, is anyone's guess. But I don't believe that Bitcoin will ever become a primary payment system. Rather, it could coexist with other systems which could be used for day-to-day -day transactions while Bitcoin could be a store of value. 
But what I'm genuinely fascinated by is the date of this post. He wrote it on January 11, 2009, so only 8 days after Bitcoin's launch or its genesis block. For that, Hal had to be a visionary and he was of immeasurable importance for Bitcoin in the early days. Unfortunately, he passed away in August of 2014 due to complications with ALS. And finally, prediction number 5. This is more of an extension to prediction number 4 because an article by Decrypt revises it with new and updated data, saying that the world's economy has grown in 11 years since the post was made. So the revised data is that the worldwide household wealth equals around $360 trillion, and by the same calculation it amounts to $18 million. Keep in mind that Hal for some reason, and probably because of rounded numbers, divided everything by 20 million coins instead of 21. And if we take that into account, the numbers are 9.5 and 17.1 million dollars respectively. How far-fetched are these, some will live long enough to see. But for the rest of us, I'm ending this again with a quote from Hal. Even if the odds of Bitcoin succeeding to this degree are slim, are they really 100 million to 1 against? Something to think about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another block.